this is the alpaca. And this is a really neat new project that is currently being made by a Finland-based company called Input Labs. And the whole idea behind this was to basically create the most consumer-friendly gamepad that you can find. And they've managed to do this by making it a Creative Commons design uh, with an open source firmware and all sorts of things like that. So basically this is an open source design that can be downloaded and modified freely by the customer, by the, the user, the end user themselves. And in fact, I say project because this is not a product. Uh, this is not something that you simply go to a web page, click buy, and then have it shipped to you. This is something that you build yourself. And in fact, you can go to the Input Labs website right now and actually just download all of the designs yourself for free. The, the design for the shell, the smaller components like the buttons and stuff, and the circuit board itself, they're all freely available. Just download them and have them sent off to someone who can make them for you, or if you have the facilities, make them yourself. But it isn't just the open source design that's really interesting about this, because this thing actually has some really impressive tech inside of it that makes it deliberately different from most controllers. So, first off, this thing is actually powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico. That's the heart of the device itself on the inside here. That uh, is the microprocessor for the entire thing. But I'm sure what everyone's eyes are drawn to right from the start is this bit right here. That's because this controller actually does not have a right analog stick at all. In its place is this small cluster of stuff here, a an eight-way hat switch of the sort that you would see on the top of a joystick, something like that. It also presses in, and a scroll wheel. And this is actually bound to act exactly like your mouse's scroll wheel does by default. But the reason it doesn't have a right analog stick is because it has a dual gyro setup on the inside. Yeah, it's got two gyroscopes in here, which is pretty unusual to have two that act in, in tandem with each other. But yeah, this actually has a dual gyro setup, and the gyroscope in this is so good that it's meant to replace the functionality of the right stick. And if you see this black surface right here, this hexagon that's sort of raised around the face buttons, this is actually a capacitive touch surface, and all you have to do is lay your thumb on it like this. And when you do this, the gyroscopes are activated, and as soon as you take your thumb off, they deactivate. So they made this as user-friendly as possible, basically, but more on that in a few. But yeah, the basic idea is you just lay your hand here to activate the gyroscope. My cat is freaking out. And I've got to say, this has the most accurate gyro controls I've ever used in a controller before. The gyroscopes in this are like a really high resolution, very high accuracy. This has a really fast polling rate, so it's extremely low latency, like 250 hertz. And uh, it also has uh, several different sensitivity settings depending on the resolution that you're running. But uh, by default, it's set to 1080p. And the best way I can describe how this actually feels, imagine a laser coming out of this, just a laser pointing straight out. And as you move the controller, the laser moves, and that's where your cursor is. It feels so one-to-one. -one. That's actually how it feels. It's like a laser beam is actually projecting onto your monitor and controlling your cursor directly. It is really that accurate. And in fact, they've deliberately made this so that it doesn't use any sort of smoothing or acceleration at all, so it feels as one-to-one -one as possible. And the way this thing works mostly is by using profiles. Now, the really cool thing about this is it doesn't use any sort of uh, software that you have to install on your PC, which I really, really like, because you gotta hate that feeling, you know, the one I'm talking about, when you get a new peripheral and you take it home and you have to actually install some bloatware that you don't actually want just to get it to work. Well, this doesn't do that. All of its settings and things are stored on the Pico itself, which means even when you unplug it, it still stores them, and you can modify them on the fly, which is where this guy comes in, this magical hexagon right here, which is basically your sort of settings button, more or less. And the way that it works is it has eight different slots for profiles that you can save. You can actually make your own and save them onto it as well, but it comes with several preloaded. And you switch them simply by holding this button here and then tapping a direction. And each direction is two different profiles, one for tapping it and one for holding it. And as soon as you let go of the magical hexagon, it will apply that profile on the fly. And the default profiles include things like an FPS fusion profile, which uses the left analog stick as a controller's analog input, but the uh, gyro as a mouse input and the uh, shoulder buttons as mouse clicks to a more normal controller input for games that need that, like an Xbox style controller input that uses all of these buttons and things not as keyboard commands but as normal controller buttons, but still uses the gyro as a mouse. Another cool thing about it is uh, your computer will automatically recognize it as an X input controller on Windows. 
and it will work immediately. And if you are on a Linux system, it actually has a mode for that. And you can switch to a Mac and Linux mode and it will be recognized as an X input there. You can also have it recognized as a generic direct input device if you need that for any reason. It also has several other settings that you can also switch on the fly using this method. Just by holding this button again and using the uh, hat switch in different directions, you can choose some other settings, like the uh, aforementioned operating system based settings, as well as stuff like the sensitivity of the gyro on the inside. Uh, by default, it's set to a 1080p resolution to feel right there, but of course, if you're running a higher resolution monitor, then a certain amount of m physical movement has to translate to more pixels moved for it to feel right. So you can also up it to a 1440 or a 4K 2160 p resolution so that it will feel okay pretty much no matter what sort of display you're using it on, although I'm not entirely sure how it would feel on like one of those really mega big ultra wides. I'm not entirely sure how those work, but uh, otherwise it feels really accurate, so it's nice that they have those settings that you can switch on the fly with just a button instead of having to deal with proprietary software that would kind of defeat the whole purpose of a Creative Commons device. Now, this is the part where I would normally tell you exactly how it feels to use, because I feel that it's important to, you know, just talk about the buttons, how they feel, compare them to other controllers, stuff like that. But that isn't as relevant with this guy as it is for a normal device, because you build this thing, which means you choose what components are put into it. So I could describe how these feel, but if you choose different components, then that's not really relevant to you. But I can at least tell you that the recommended components that are on the Input Labs website are what's in here, and they are very nice. The buttons have quite a uh, definite kind of hard feel to them. It is a relatively loud controller, I should point out. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty noisy just by virtue of what it's made out of. But uh, the stick here is actually a current gen Alps stick pot, so it feels really good to use. It's uh, relatively stiff, which I like, and it has one of those really strong return to center kind of feels, so it's uh, got some resistance to it, which I prefer. And uh, all of the other buttons just feel generally nice. It's not the most premium quality feel that you'll ever get on a controller, but it's also something that you hand make. And you can't necessarily expect it to feel exactly like that, but it does actually feel good. And also something I should probably mention, you might be noticing the design has all these angular edges to it. And you might be wondering what the heck's up with that and doesn't that make it uncomfortable to use? And at first I was in that camp too. I thought, man, that kind of looks uncomfortable. I'm not sure if I'd be able to hold that for a long period of time comfortably, but actually it feels really good in the hand. These angular edges do not jab into your hands at all. They feel just fine. And this sort of wider stance, like if you compare the way the grips are on this controller to something like an Xbox controller, they're narrower. And uh, this wider stance helps to to really wrench it around with uh, your wrists so that the uh, gyro input actually, you know, works better because you can move it around a little bit easier than you could if it were a little bit more narrow. The only real disadvantage to the physical design is these bits right here uh, can kind of jab into your fingers a little bit, this sort of angular bit below the triggers. Uh, depending on exactly how your hand sits when you're holding it, right, you might have these kind of up against your knuckles and they can be a little bit sharp, but to be fair, if that's the case for you, this is a 3D printed material, which means you could just get a fine, like a medium fine grit sandpaper and just sand those corners down to round them and then problem solved, that's it. And of course, the really cool thing about a design like this is since it's Creative Commons, you can modify it however you want. So if you're seeing an aspect of it that you don't like, if you're seeing a physical dimension or something that you're not sure about, you can change it yourself. You might be, for instance, looking at this analog stick and say, that's kind of tall. That's taller than most other analog sticks. Maybe you have kind of smaller hands and you're not sure if that would be a bit of a stretch for your thumb and get kind of uncomfortable over time. Maybe you want that shorter. So you can just plug the analog stick module into Blender, shave off, say two or three millimeters of the uh, the stick there, save it, and there you go. Now you have modified the design to be exactly as you wish. You can round off the corners of this uh, the grips if you think that would help, or you can make the triggers shorter so that they press in more whenever you press them, stuff like that. And you can modify any aspect of this design that you want so that the finished product is exactly how you want it to be. That is the beauty of a Creative Commons design like this. You can indeed do whatever you want with it once you've downloaded it. And also, if you're thinking, okay, that seems kind of neat, but I don't have a 3D printer, I don't know how to print circuit boards, 
this is clearly out of my reach. This is something for like tech enthusiasts. I don't have any of that stuff. Well, the cool thing is this technology has been around for long enough that there are entire websites and 3D printing houses and stuff like that, workshops even, that will do this for you. And in fact, the Input Labs website does recommend some. So if you need a circuit board printed, there are websites that specifically do that. Just send them the designs and they'll print it for you. Same with 3D printing. There are places probably physically near you uh, that can 3D print as long as you give them the files, or there are websites that specifically do that. They will, you just send them a, a design, they'll send you a quote, and if you like the price, they'll print it and send it to you. So don't let the idea of this being more of a project deter you from trying it because there are resources to help people actually accomplish stuff like this in the uh, hobbyist tech scene so that, you know, even if you don't have any of these devices in your actual house, there's still ways that you can get a hold of and accomplish projects like this without breaking the bank. Another thing I should probably point out before we continue is that I know there's a certain expectation that uh, 3D printed plastic feels very cheap and fragile, but uh, that's actually not necessarily the case because the cool thing about 3D printing is there's like a billion different filaments that you can load into a 3D printer and actually use. And indeed the filaments that they recommend on the Input Labs website are of a much higher quality. And as you can probably see just from looking at it, they have nice rounded edges and actually look really good and they feel solid. It is a very light device Device, but it's not a device that feels fragile. It doesn't feel like you're gonna snap it in half if you grip it too hard. The plastic actually feels just fine because the more premium filaments that they recommend just have a better quality to them. And they also come in a lot of different colors, which is also really cool because that means you can customize exactly how you want it to look. And as you can see, the design is sort of in two layers by default with like a single color on top and then all the buttons on the bottom being a different color. And you can choose whatever colors you want for your own project. What about disadvantages, things that this does not have? Well, for one, this does not yet have any vibration. There are no vibration motors in here. So currently, if you're you know, looking for like a rumble feature in a controller, this does not have that, although it is on their checklist of things they wish to add options for later, so they are aware of it. Uh, the other one is this is currently a wired-only controller. Uh, you cannot use any sort of Bluetooth wireless connectivity with it as of yet. However, again, this is another thing that's on their checklist. They're aware that that people want this and they're looking into actually doing it but I'm sure they don't just want to ship any basic Bluetooth connectivity on the board because the whole point of this thing is that really accurate low latency gyro and your traditional Bluetooth connection might not be low latency enough for them so they're probably looking into a better solution so it might take a little bit of time but as you can see they've done some forward planning because there's actually a battery bay that is part of the 3d printing design already so it's it's already there it's just not functional just yet I should also probably mention that there's a relatively unique way of actually updating the firmware and stuff on here since it doesn't use any sort of proprietary software. Instead, you actually just hold these buttons down and it will uh, set itself up into boot mode, which means your PC will basically see it as a removable storage device instead of an, a controller. And uh, you can then just drag the updated firmware onto it, let it go, it will update itself, restart itself in normal controller mode, and you're done. That's it. That's really all it takes. That's all you have to do. And this is also the same way that you will uh, add new custom profiles if you want to do that. So, naturally, I wanted to come up with some tests to put this thing through its paces and test how it did in different uh, scenarios. And I chose a couple of different sort of categories, you could say, like three different overall things that I wanted it to be able to do. And I ended up actually recording one game from each category just to showcase it a little bit. Uh, try not to pay attention to how badly I'm doing <laughs> in the background footage because I'm having to hold the controller in sort of an odd angle and sit in a strange way so that the filming works correctly. I'm not, uh, like, breathing into the camera and you can actually see the controller and the screen at the same time. But uh, that, I'll just use that as an excuse for why my gameplay is so terrible. But anyway, the first one I wanted to take a look at was a game that was already very controller friendly but needed the right stick for camera movement, right? So start off with something simple. In this case, I chose Hi-Fi Rush because, well, one, the game is incredible and you should absolutely play it. But two, it is exactly that. It's a game that works very well with the controller out of the box and uh, you're 
pretty much always going to be on that right stick for movement, so I wanted to see how well the gyro could act as a full replacement, and it turns out it actually works just fine. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush plays very well with the alpaca because, of course, the actual components themselves are really nice. All the buttons, the Alps stick and everything, they're all high-quality components, so in terms of just pure responsiveness, it feels very good to use as a controller in general, but also in terms of the camera control, using the gyro instead of a right stick is actually very usable in a game like this. It is not difficult at all to get used to. It took me just a couple of minutes to get used to how best to move my arms and my wrists to actually, you know, get the right amount of movement on screen. But after just a little bit of uh, getting used to it, it was really simple and, and very intuitive to do, and it works very well for that. So in terms of already controller-friendly games, it is a very fine controller to use, and it works exactly as you would expect for that application. And the gyro control is detailed and good enough to feel just fine as a camera control replacement for a right stick. Although one thing I should also mention, by the way, is that in case you actually need right stick control for something, like you're playing a game with an odd control scheme that uses the right stick for something else other than the camera, or you're using an emulator where gyro control doesn't make any sense, stuff like that, the uh, controller does actually have a classic control profile that disables the gyro when you select it, and it makes the eight-way hat switch actually emulate a right stick. So in case you actually do need it for something, you can still have right analog stick functionality. The option is there, which is nice. The second thing I wanted to take a look at was a shooter. I wanted like some sort of fast-paced FPS, something with a lot of movement, with a lot of aiming, to test how well the gyro aim works. And uh, so I chose Turbo Overkill for this one because, hey, that's a really awesome game in general and is also very fast-paced, very movement-focused, so it seemed like a really good choice to really push this thing's limits and see how well it does. And uh, it turns out, for one, I'm really not that great with gyro aiming in FPS yet. It's not something that I've ever actually tried to get used to because I just use a keyboard and mouse, right? So it's not something that I generally would use, but that's the whole point of this thing, is to be able to do stuff like that in a situation where you might not otherwise be able to, because you have mobility problems, or because maybe you've got a Steam Deck, and you've got it hooked up to a dock, and you want to play an FPS on your TV, but you don't want to get like a whole lap desk thing to get a keyboard and mouse set up, you want a controller to lounge in your chair and use. Well, this is actually really good for that, and uh, in terms of FPS controls with this thing, it works very well. By default, its bindings are, they make a lot of sense, they're really good for a um, movement-based stuff because the jump key is bound to one of the back buttons, the buttons on the back of the controller, which means you don't have to move your other fingers to use it, and you don't have to like move your finger off of the gyro aiming to jump, for instance, which is very advantageous in a game like this. And the gyro just feels super accurate, so it's really useful in an FPS. It actually works fantastically, and is probably the best experience with a controller I've ever had in a first-person shooter, which is normally not something that I would ever combine, but in this case, because of that very high-resolution, low-latency gyro set up, it feels really good to play, and I'm sure if I actually, you know, sat down with some more time and decided to really get used to gyro aiming in an FPS, this would be my controller of choice to do that because the gyros just feel that good. And uh, even after only a few minutes of being able to get used to it, I was performing pretty well and was able to keep up with a higher difficulty game like this pretty admirably. So I have a feeling that if I was to put in, you know, a week's time of, of really fully getting used to a gyro aiming setup, I could actually be pretty good with this thing, and that means a lot to me because I am historically really awful at FPS with controllers. Like just really legendarily bad. I suck at it. I am a keyboard and mouse person, so using a controller in a game like this would normally be anathema to me. So just the fact that I was able to do it and actually have a good time tells me that this is a very good controller for FPS in general. And then, finally, on the completely other end of the pacing spectrum, I wanted something that didn't have controller support at all, and was very mouse-driven, to test how well the mouse emulation would work with, like, permanent gyro controls instead of a normal mouse. So I chose Hellcard, because that's a game that, as of the filming of this, doesn't have any controller support whatsoever, and is pretty much 100% mouse-driven with WASD as the camera controls. And uh, the controller does have a profile where the gyro is the mouse, the shoulder buttons are left and right click, and, well, the triggers, I should say, and uh, the analog stick is actually WASD, so I just selected that profile real quick, and uh, it actually works really well for this. I was surprised. I was a little bit unsure as to whether or not it would hold up in a game. I mean, I use the mouse in the desktop environment just to see how it works, and it works fine there, but in terms of, like, selecting smaller buttons and things, I wasn't sure how well, the how the accuracy would hold up basically, but it works fine. It is actually a very usable device 
to replace a mouse if you have to, if you have mobility problems and can't use a mouse very well, or if you're gaming on a setup where you just can't get a mouse to it because you're lounging in a chair or something, this is a very good solution for that because the gyro is so accurate, you can control it very naturally. And in a, like I said, it's like a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of how it feels between mouse cursor and movement of the controller. So it's all very natural. You don't have to really get used to it because there's not really much to get used to. That's just just how good the gyros are to the point that uh, it immediately feels intuitive to just lay your finger on that surface, start moving the controller around, and you will immediately get used to how it feels to move the mouse in this way. Like I said, it kind of feels like a laser pointer or something. So uh, once you start using it, there's pretty much no learning curve at all for a more simple uh, mouse-only driven interface like this. It actually works pretty much perfectly. So this has been a quick peek at the Alpaca. I think it is an awesome idea. I think it's a very fantastic controller for what it's going for. And I think this dual gyro setup is a really big deal and is something that even larger controller manufacturers should start considering because the accuracy and the precision that it gives you in terms of gyro control is unmatched by single gyro setups that I've seen. And I never really thought that it would make that much of a difference just to have two. But after having used this, I can tell you that it definitely very much makes a difference. I'll be linking you in the uh, description down below this video to the main Input Labs website so you can just view all of their documentation on the controller itself. You can see how it works, so what sort of components you might need to purchase to put it together, what sorts of uh, files you would need to download, all that stuff, including some tips on finding uh, circuit board and 3D printing resources if you can't do that yourself so that you can actually, you know, have a place to go to actually get a quote from and uh, have this thing made. It's a really exciting project. I am always in support of more consumer-friendly practices and something like this, an open source controller project, is extremely freaking cool to me because it's just a community moddable open source thing that's just really friendly to the consumer and something that I feel is kind of the future of the enthusiast and a hobbyist tech space is to have more projects like this where a lot of people can come together and contribute and make something really, really neat available to a lot of people for a lot less uh, than other projects that are made, of course, by, you know, large companies that can charge whatever they want. So that is uh, what I think about the Alpaca. Definitely recommended as something that you should look into. I understand that this sort of thing is not for everyone. You know, I highly doubt Input Labs thinks that they're going to surpass the Xbox controller in terms of market saturation and have <laughs> thousands and thousands of these in every home. But... This is definitely something that's really cool and absolutely worth looking into because of the unique stuff that it offers. And for people like me with uh, the onset symptoms of carpal tunnel, I got them combustible wrists, it's actually really useful to have a uh, gyro setup because it makes me move my thumbs around less, which is actually helpful for the pain uh, once the uh, strain sets in after about an hour and a half or two hours of playtime. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on what sorts of mobility issues you might have that could be uh, solved by something like this, or if you just want a cool controller because it looks like something new and interesting. So thank you guys very much for watching. Please show these guys your support, and I'll see you next time.